It's good to be in the house of the Lord this evening. Yes. Amen. We are excited about Brother and Sister Naomi and Sister Sarah being here. Amen. Going to tell us about what's going on in the Philippines. Amen. It takes, it takes a committed heart to be a missionary. And it takes a committed wife and daughter to be a missionary. Amen. And we are glad that they have taken out time to be with us. Let's go to the Lord in prayer as we begin our service. God, in the name of Jesus, we love you today. We're grateful for your mercy. We're grateful for your grace. We're grateful for the opportunity to come to you. God, to touch the hem of your garment, to worship you in spirit and in truth. No, God, I pray that your will would be done in this service, God. You know what each and every heart needs. You know what each and every life needs. God, I pray that you speak to us today from heaven. Help us to be sensitive to your voice, oh God. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, worship the Lord tonight. If you have your hymn book tonight, open to page 311. I'll fly away, page 311 in the hymn book. Well, it's going to be some glad morning. When this life is over, I'll fly away. I'm going to a home on God's celestial shore.
fortune, hallelujah, more precious than anything you could ever imagine you could eat, praise the Lord. Jesus is the main thing. He's what we're waiting to see, hallelujah. Come on, somebody, praise the Lord tonight. Gather my stuff, pack it all up, send me down the river. There goes sorrow, my tomorrow's waiting for me. I've got no time to look behind, there's nothing here to see. Time go.
price of price. But you know what? We don't have to wait till we get there. The Bible says we have a token of our inheritance today. I want to walk in the fullness of that token. Amen. 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 My Lord. The presence of the Lord is in this house. to go to the Lord in prayer. We've got several prayer requests that need to be mentioned. Brother Curtivo needs our continued prayers. Let's keep that uh, lifted up. Sister Carolyn Good, Brother Simmons' sister, is in need of a touch from God. Uh, a Sister Simpkins, none of uh, you would know her. Uh, Brother Simmons, I think, is acquainted with Brother Randall Garcia from uh, Mount Hermon, UPC. Sister Simpkins is his mother-in-law. She is 78 years old, and she fell and broke her right arm and hip. And she had surgery today. She came through okay on the surgery, but unless God undertakes, she's got a long recovery road ahead of her. So let's be sure and pray for her. Let's remember Miss Evelyn, Miss Renee. Just remember those grandbabies. Yes. Amen. Amen. Any uh, spoken request tonight? Yes. Amen. Let's remember that. Brother Arvisa. Let the Lord keep his hands on all the ministries coming out of Acts 2 here locally and around the world. The Lord bless those in Jesus' name. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Yes, ma'am. else tonight yes oh my word let's pray for that oh my Jesus yes sir Anybody else? Special and spokens, lost loved ones, let's take these needs to the Lord in prayer. God, in the name of Jesus, we love you today. We're grateful for the opportunity, oh God, to call on you to bring our needs to the only one who can meet these needs. God, we want to lean on the everlasting arms of Jesus Christ. We want to lean on the promises that have come from heaven. We want to lean on the hand of God. We're asking you to intervene in each and every need that's been voiced here tonight. Some have been for healing of, of illnesses and some have been for healing of situations. God, you see each and every one and I ask you, oh Lord, to touch every heart, touch every life, touch every need as only you can, bringing you all the glory, honor, and praise, oh God. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Yes, yes, yes. Ah, my, my, there's a sweet presence of the Lord in the house tonight. Does anyone have need of prayer? Okay. All right. Got a couple of announcements, then we'll receive our offering, then we're going to turn Brother and Sister Amy loose. I think they're chomping at the bit. <laughs> Amen. Remember, October 24th is our youth bonfire. Uh, yeah, it's going to be fun. All right? Still on? Okay. <laughs> All right. Amen. We're going to have a time with that. I think the temperature's going to be right. Amen. November the 7th and November the 8th, Remember, Brother Ron Gidros is going to be in service with us that Saturday evening and that Sunday morning. Also, a little bit far out, but on November the 15th, 
there will be a baby shower for Sister Lucy Torres here at the church after Sunday school, after church on that Sunday morning. All right. All right, now it's time to receive our offering. Lord, upon the authority and the orders of your word, we have given and it shall be given to us. Pressed down, shaken together, and running over. We are tithers, we are givers, and we bring our tithes and offerings today into your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked and the curse is broken. We live under an open heaven. And you pour out such a blessing on us that there is not enough room to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritance, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, debts dismissed, royalties received. Our greatest desire is that our families will be saved and walking with Him in divine, perfect health and abundance and walking in favor and blessings. We shall be blessed going in. We shall be blessed going out. And all that we do will prosper in the name of Jesus. Brother Navy, all that you're doing in the Philippines and in Hong Kong is going to prosper in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Sister Navy. My Lord, bring your offerings tonight. right here and worship him I know we worship him a few minutes ago but can you worship him too much we can't worship him too much we can't even worship him enough hey he's worthy he's worthy he's worthy I speak blessings over each and every one of you I speak life to each and every one of you I don't know what kind of situations everybody's facing, but God knows, and I speak life today. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Praise God! Praise God! Hey, man. Let's make Brother and Sister Naomi welcome as they come, and Brother, take your liberty. Y'all want to sing? Help yourself. We want to hear church, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I enjoy so much the the, uh, the worship. Y'all just make us feel at home, so uh, uh, we're just going to let our hair down and have church. Yeah. And I feel like God's got something in store for our service tonight. I do want to introduce you uh, once again to uh, my family. Uh, Sarah, this is her first time uh, in Beaumont, Texas, and uh, uh, we're so glad that uh, she has been able to come with us. She's having a great time. She gets spoiled by everyone that uh, she meets, it seems like. Uh, she just mentions some food or something, and lo and behold, that's where we end up eating. Uh, I don't think the Odoms even like spaghetti, but we ended up at, we ended up at Carabas the other day. Wow. Just because of her. We, we really appreciate you all taking such good care of us. Um, we 
we are so, so blessed. Uh, and you have been just so very, very kind. We, we, let, we give honor to uh, your bishop. Uh, we, we love uh, love Brother Simmons. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. Our, hearts, our hearts are broken when we receive the news of Sister yes. Simmons passing. We agree with you all. Amen. can't imagine the, the impact. Um, but uh, God just, I know he's with you, and he provides yes. strength yes. to get through this very difficult, difficult time. Uh, we also want to just acknowledge and and, uh, and give honor to Pastor and Sister Odom. Uh, these are some wonderful folks you have leading you. Uh, we're blessed with a tremendous ministry team here. Amen. And uh, they have been uh, just a lot of fun to be with. We feel like, uh, although we have just recently um, gotten to know each other, we feel like we've known each other for forever. Just there's yeah, just that kind of people. We, we love that. Um, this time I'd like to introduce you to this beautiful, reintroduce you to this beautiful young lady up here. And uh, have Sister Naomi come and just say whatever's on her heart. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise oh, we can do better than that. Praise the Lord, everybody. We serve an awesome God, don't we? Yes. He's so great and greatly to be praised. Amen. And I, I want to say, they've been your, your pastor, sister, have been spoiled and rotten. I might send Brother Naomi off, but. No, but I'd like to share something with you that um, is really uh, a great passion of mine, and that is our Bible college. Mm -hmm. Our Bible college, we have uh, established a lot of new ministers through this. Right. But you know, when Brother Name and I got to the Philippines, we're like, there is no way we're going to reach all these islands by ourselves. Right. We need help. Come on. Right. There's no way. There's no way your pastor and his wife can reach this community all by themselves. They need your help. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we decided um, with the Lord led us and guided us to open a Bible college. Right now we have um, graduated a little over 100 students. Most of those are either pastoring or helping their pastors in their local churches teaching Bible studies. God is doing great things. With, if you want to get be a blessing, sponsor one of our students. I'm sure, but I'm sure they did. But I'm just sharing it again. So, sponsor one of our students because um, you will get a blessing right in return. Because every soul they win, you're going to be a part of that soul. You're going to get a crown of uh, jewels on your on your head in heaven, and you're going to think, "Wow, where did that one come from?" I remember when, the, and those students are going to say. Because of you, these souls are saved. Yeah. And so that is such a blessing to see yes, souls Lord. be saved. Amen. And I want to thank you for all that you have done for us, church is sponsored, all the students that you sponsored. God is doing great things yes, in the Philippines. I could stay here a long time and tell you all the things, but I'm going to let him get to the slide. But thank you very much, and God bless you. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Do you want to play? Come on, go sing a song. You, now you're just, you're just kind of teasing them now. So. Yeah. You're going to have to. Oh, I don't want him to play? Okay. <laughs> okay. You got on that one sound. I want the other one that be a sounds too tangy for me. Okay. <laughs> tangy, it's tangy. Praise the Lord. Can you all hear me? Yeah, Lord. It's closer. I'm a little shorter than sister over here.
single line that tells me I will never measure up. I am more than just a sum of every high and every Just who I am because I need to know Ooh, oh, You say I'm love when I can't feel a thing You say I'm strong when I think I'm weak You say I am hell when I fall in shock Now is everything you think of me In you I find my worth In you I find my identity Ooh, You say I'm love When I can't feel a thing You say I'm strong I think I'm weak You say I'm hell When I fall in short When I don't belong You say I'm yours And I believe Oh, I believe What you say of me I believe Taking all I have and now I'm laying it at your feet You have every failure, God, and you have every victory support of world missions we, we honor you for that and especially for the for the support of the work in the Philippines and Hong Kong this time we'd like to go ahead and turn you to John chapter 9 and um, like to read verse number 4 John 9 4 words of Jesus Christ. He said, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. Yes. Mm -hmm. The night cometh when no man can work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yep. So with the help of God tonight, yeah. I'd like to, while we're preaching, while we're presenting, we'll also be stressing the point that the sun's going down. Yeah. Night time's coming. It's time to work. Amen. Can we pray? Father, we thank you tonight. Uh, God, for all your blessings in our lives. Thank you, God, for grace at, at, in the evening hour. Thank you, O oh God. Amen. For your great plan and letting us be part of it. God, you God, you place us in this in this scenario. God. 
God, you ordained, God, that it would be us for such a time of this as this, God, to experience, amen, the great end time harvest, oh Lord. Amen. God, let us be harvest minded. God, let us be in tune, oh God. Amen. That you are preparing, the, you've already prepared the harvest. Help us, oh God. Amen. To have a passion to work. Amen. While it's still day. God bless you all. You may be seated. We want to kick things off tonight with uh, just a short little video clip that uh, illustrates some of the challenges we face in Asia. No. A lot of what you're going to see, it's just about five or six minutes long in this part, but a lot of what you're going to see was t see is taken in places outside of the Philippines, some of it's Hong Kong, Myanmar, Thailand. Uh, but what I think is important for everybody to know is that Asia, even in modern times, it's, it's run over by idols. Uh, you know, we think of idol worship as something maybe that only happens uh, happened back in Bible days, but th this footage was taken in recent in recent days, and uh, I hope it touches you like it does me. Because when I see people praying to idols, it just stirs me up. I want to tell them about the one true living God, amen. Jesus Christ. Amen. But, amen. Here we go. In the year 1271 AD, the Emperor Kublai Khan asked the explorer Marco Polo to bring 100 missionaries from Europe to teach Christianity to his people. Sadly, those missionaries never came. The glorious light of the gospel never had the opportunity to shine. The Khan and his people turned to Buddhism and all of Asia descended into the depths of idolatry. The 50 countries of Asia constitute 60% of the world's entire population. More than 4.5 billion souls live on this one continent alone, and all throughout Asia you'll find people praying to idols which have no eyes to see nor ears to hear their prayers. Asia's bright exception has been the country of the Philippines, where a tremendous apostolic revival has been birthed. The vision God gave us for the Philippines mission has three mandates. First, we must develop many more national workers to take the gospel to their own people. This has been the mission propelling the Apostolic Bible College of the Philippines since 2010. Today, many ABC graduates are actively involved in ministry. Second, we must establish many more churches in the Philippines. By God's grace, we have seen the number of our churches more than triple over the past decade. And third, as the work matures, we must begin sending missionaries out of the Philippines to reach Asia and the rest of the world. By God's grace and with your help, all of these things have begun to come to pass. 
Workers and ministers continue to be trained. New churches are being established, and the ALJC Philippines mission is beginning to take the gospel beyond its borders. In 2000, 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 And and Malaysia for someone to come. That work has taken root and is now beginning. Okay. Sorry about that. Need to be trained. New churches are being established, and the ALJC Philippines mission is beginning to take the gospel beyond its borders. In 2012, we commissioned our first Filipino missionaries to Melbourne, Australia. That work has taken root and is now beginning to blossom. In 2017, an exciting new work opened up in Hong Kong, China. Recently, we've gotten requests from people in Japan and Malaysia for someone to come and start works in those countries. I see a unique opportunity for the Philippines to become a base of operations for reaching Asia with the gospel. The needs in Asia vary. Not every mission field needs or is ready for a full-time resident missionary. Countries that have existing apostolic works would be greatly benefited by regular visits from seasoned ministers a few times a year. Nations where new works are springing up will need more frequent visits. Some places like Hong Kong would benefit greatly from a full-time resident missionary. In many countries of Asia, Christianity is despised and or illegal. Persecution is a real problem in a big chunk of Asia and the Middle East. In these places, people worship in secret and missions work is done undercover. But regardless of the danger or the cost, everyone needs to hear the gospel. Here in the Philippines, there's always room for more hands to help in the Lord's work. We're looking for people who are willing to work wherever there's a need. You and I can only imagine how different things would be today if missionaries would have answered that call seven and one half centuries ago. Today, the call for missionaries to work in Asia is going out once again. The Lord is doing great things here. We've got a great team here. We'd love to have you come work with us. Praise God. Everybody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm not sure what the need is right now, but could we just join in prayer? Father, we thank you. God, you know what the situation is. God, we bring every need before you right now. God, asking you, God, to move. God, amen. God, if, God, if there's a need for healing, bring healing. If there's a need, God, for comfort and strength, bring that, oh God. Amen, Lord, you know, oh God, every situation, oh God. Amen. We thank you, God. God, we put it all in your hands. Amen. Thanking you, God. Thanking you, God. Thanking you, God. Thanking you, God. Amen. In Jesus' name, I give you the praise and the glory and the honor. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Jesus, we thank you. God, now that we know the specific need of God. God, nothing's too hard for you, God. We're asking you to touch Sister Gail, God. God. We're asking you, God, to do a work. God, we don't give up hope, God, until, until you say, oh, God, amen, it's over. It's not over until you say it's over. Amen. God, no, it's too hard for you. God, we ask that you enter into that situation, oh God. Amen. 
you um, remind you where the Philippines is it's actually this group of islands right here in uh, in Asia we are right now about 13 hours behind the Philippines and that that always kind of gets to Americans you know, because you're behind Amen. Amen. we like to think we're the leaders but but right now it is already tomorrow morning over there amen so um, just look at your watch and add an hour you know what time it is in the Philippines so somewhere around 9 a.m. So just to, that's China, that's India, that's Australia, and the equator's right about there, which means the Philippines is very hot. We have two seasons in the Philippines. I might have told you that last time. Anybody remember what they are? Hot and hotter. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. Actually, wet and dry. So um, six months of the year, we experience hurricane season. It's actually typhoons, they call them over there. Same, same kind of thing. Same season as you from about June through December. It's wet. Um, and then it dries out the rest of the year and does get about a couple of degrees hotter. So it goes from about a uh, high of 90 every day to a high of about 92. So, yeah, yeah, so it's hot all the time. So here, here again, we're zooming in. Uh, the Big Island on the north is where the capital city of Manila is uh, with about 30 million people. It ranks as one of the largest cities in the world. Uh, down here is Mindanao where they grow a tremendous amount of fruit. Uh, and here is our headquarters island, Negros Island, right there. It's where our um, Philippines home is and where the Bible school is as well. So quick reminders as far as facts, the Philippines is uh, the 13th largest country in the world. In terms of population, over 106 million people in that one country alone. One of our big challenges in reaching the nation is the large number of languages spoken there. Wow. It's so crazy. You go from one town to the next and they're speaking a completely different language. I tease them all the time that Tower of Babel was surely somewhere nearby here. Uh, most Filipinos are um, able to speak uh, several languages. What is that term for somebody who speaks multiple languages? Polylingual, polyglot. And what's the term for somebody who speaks just one language? American. <laughs> yeah. It's, so uh, we are kind of unique because most countries of the world, people do speak more than one language. But there they grow up learning usually about three, at least three. So every Filipino speaks his native tongue. That's when he grows up within his village. And he speaks the national language, which is Tagalog, uh, which is spoken throughout the country as well. And thankfully, they're all trained, uh, they're all taught English. Uh, in, the, in the public schools. So many Filipinos speak English fluently. In fact, you'll catch them in the call centers often. Uh, and um, it means that we can communicate and usually be understood almost ev everywhere. But when we get into the more remote regions, we do utilize an interpreter, uh, usually the pastor or somebody in the church will interpret for us so that everybody can understand well. Um, this is not a typo. There are more than 7,000 individual islands in the Philippines. Many of them are no bigger than that chair, I think. But um, if it's sticking you know, out of the water continuously, um, they'll count it because they really are proud of that big number. But about 700 of the islands are big enough to have people, permanent populations on them. So that's a big challenge to evangelizing the nation because just getting to where the people are is sometimes very challenging. Sometimes it's just little tiny little boats that get you from this island to the next and just arranging the various forms of transportation. Often it takes us a whole day to travel no more than 50 miles just because we got to cover you know, a lot of water and just figure out transportation different ways. The total land mass is about equivalent to the state of Arizona. Uh, the Philippines was a U.S. territory until after World War II, and because of that long-time uh, affiliation with the United States, most Filipinos really love Americans. In fact, they would love to be Americans. Um, and they love everything about America, and they want to copy American ways. And sometimes I got to got to slow them down. And say not every you don't want to copy everything, especially the stuff you see on TV. Um, the country is uh, poor by American standards. The average worker, if he works in the fields, a labor type worker uh, in the sugarcane fields nearby us, will work from sunup to sundown. 
to bring home five dollars a day not five an hour five or twelve hours in the sun you know and somehow they manage to actually feed their families put clothes on their children's back and they do it all with a smile on their face Filipinos are some of the most upbeat people you'll ever want to meet in the encouraging laughing having a good time and uh, it just goes to show money is not the, the, the secret to happiness. Amen. It really isn't. Um, in the uh, better jobs, like in the call centers, they, they might earn $10 a day. Yeah, so it's not, it's not a rich nation. Um, if you hear about us in the, in the news here, it's probably because something bad happened. To, we, we get off and hit by, you all are crying about being hit maybe two or three times recently by two typhoons. Uh, by hurricanes, we get it, you know, 15 times a year. No, I'm not, not exaggerating. But that's the normal number of, of typhoons, which is the same as hurricane, that come through our country. So, yeah, we're, we see a lot of what you've seen, along with floods, earthquakes, and volcanic eruptions. When's the last time you had one of those? Yeah, so we, we get all the above. Um, the country is r predominantly Roman Catholic, about 80% Catholic, with a strong Muslim influence in the southern islands, which is becoming more and more of a concern as terrorism, uh, kidnappings, and what have you is, is on the increase. And we do have many churches in the southern islands, and there's a tremendous revival going on there. So we do travel uh, sometimes extensively through the south, so please do keep us in your prayers. Amen. Amen because they provide protection. Talked briefly about the vision that God gave us when we first arrived in the Philippines. I want to recap that uh, in your hearing. The, th the Lord really put three distinct things in our mind. If we're really going to reach this nation, these are the things we need to focus on. Number one, we need help. Sister Naomi mentioned it. We need to train up thousands of national workers to take the gospel to their own people. So this is where everything starts. If you, in fact, you can't. No point in building churches, and, and there's really no way to send out missionaries or do anything else unless you are training up lots of people to take the gospel right. to, right. to more people. This is how we multiply. Mm -hmm. Amen. It's take, it's, it, and it makes a lot of sense because the Filipinos, they already know the languages, they already know the culture, right. and they know the people and the ways uh, of getting around and all of that, and they can do so much eat more easily and, and inexpensively than we can. So it's not God's, as Sister Naomi pointed out so, so uh, appropriately, it's not God's will, it's not his plan, rather, for, for just the missionary company, uh, couple to be doing all of the all, all evangelism. So this is the number one thing we focus on. The second uh, is that, obviously, we need to establish a lot more churches, and we thank God for you folks who have already... Uh, helped us in, in building a, a church in the Philippines. We'll show you that a little bit later. Um, but this is one of the great ways uh, of, uh, of being a blessing to the work. Mm -hmm. But we, he made it uh, pr uh, clear, you know, the, we have to build many more churches. A lot of them don't have cars. So churches can't be too far away if you don't have the car. Right. So, right. so we need to bring the churches to them. Mm -hmm. um, and this, uh, this point, this third point, was the one that uh, kind of, made it all so clear, and that is ultimately it's God's plan that every work would multiply itself. In fact, I believe every Christian ought to multiply him, his, his self or herself. Amen. Amen. All right, so about six of you believe that. Amen. But that's really, that's really God's plan is for us to multiply. Amen. Each one, reach one. You know, multiply. Every living thing that, that God created was, was designed to reproduce. You read it in Genesis. They, every, every, it doesn't matter whether it's plants, animals, birds, fishes. God made them all to reproduce after their own kind. So saints should eventually, when you're mature, you should, you should be reproducing saints. And if you're not reproducing in the natural realm, you're sick. Something wrong. You're dying. You know, so I believe the same same applies in the spirit realm. Sooner or later, when you get to maturity, you are reproducing, and so it's even so for churches. Churches ought to reproduce churches. Ministers ought to reproduce ministers, and and why not mission works reproduce mission works? And so this is what God's put in in our heart, and it's what we continually teach and preach to the to the local ministry there. At first, it was like deer in the headlights, like like what? what? Are you what? We, we, we us send out missionaries. We we we, we need you to have, uh, you know we're so needy. We need you. We need you to help us. I said I understand, but but 
God wants you to understand that we shouldn't always remain at this level. We need to continue wow. to grow. Wow. And the true hallmark of growth and maturity is we reach a point where it's not all just taken in, but we're given out. And we're, yeah. we're ministering. We're not always just being ministered to, but we're ministering to others. And, wow. and what God has re- uh, done here, he wants to re- reproduce other, other places. Yeah. And they started getting it. And the transformation over the process of time has been nothing but remarkable. Yeah. We used to have general conferences where the ALG, where, where the, 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 before we got there, uh, they would request every year for like seven to $10,000 be sent from the United States to, to the Philippines so we could have a nice general conference. Well, so they could have a nice general conference there. Well, that, you know, I, I, as soon as I got there, I told the guys, we can do better than this. We don't, yeah. we don't need to be dependent on outside money for, uh, for general conferences. So I cut it off. I, uh, and uh, mm-hmm. I said, we, we're going to support our own. Well, it was, our conferences were smaller to start off, yeah. but this, just this last year, just to tell you how the trans- transformation has gone, we not only paid for our own conference, we raised three thousand dollars to build a church in the Philippines among people Woo. who make five dollars a day. Come on, Amen. come on! Thank you, Lord. Yeah, praise God. Amen. So, you know, we're we're we're, we're a little bit we're proud, uh, Holy Ghost proud of the work that we're seeing, uh, the progress we're seeing. So we'll look at some of those points again one by one. Uh, by looking at the, the first point, and that is training workers. So the, our focus, really, uh, uh, primarily of our time and efforts, most of it is, is right here. We spend five days a week, five, day, uh, five hours a day, five days a week, training uh, uh, young uh, men and women in our Bible school. And then on weekends, we're usually traveling to do uh, minister seminars and, and uh, uh, preach evangelistic services and such. Uh, throughout the rest of the country. So um, this is really where, where we focus. This is always number one, training more workers. And it seems like no matter how many we train, we don't nearly ever have enough. Yeah. So we, we started a Bible school in 2010, as Sister Naomi mentioned. We have um, graduated well over 100. We also, we also have an online Bible school with about 170 students from around the world that, that's going 24-7. And uh, uh, this is uh, the greatest source of joy in our lives, yeah. is to see the progress in their lives, Thank to see Lord. those who didn't even have a Bible, many of them, when they came to the Bible school, didn't even own their own Bible, yeah. uh, now become productive uh, yeah. soul winners yeah. uh, and ministers of the gospel. Some of them are already pastoring two and three churches, yeah. just fresh Thank out of the Bible God. school a few years. Yeah. Amen. Thank so we give, them, we give them Ooh. honor. And we thank you for your support of our Bible school because that's where it all starts. Is right is right there, Amen. The next thing we want to uh, give you a glimpse of is your church uh, of our churches, uh, your your daughter, your, your your sister churches there in the Philippines. Now, um, I don't know how you feel about this wonderful facility you you have here, but we would be del- any of our churches would trade places with you in a heartbeat because we don't have a single church with padded seats or carpeting or air conditioning like this. We have a few that have AC, uh, but, but with, I think three out of like 70 something have, have AC. Mostly it's 90 degrees all the time, uh, four hour services in the sweltering heat wow. under 10 roofs, wow. yeah. Uh, but they're, again, they're very happy about it and, and uh, all the churches that you're seeing here, uh, almost every one of them was constructed with help from folks just like you. Uh, who, who just got a, a passion to, to help the work. Yeah. And what a blessing it is because, again, with them being so poor, the church having a building yeah. uh, is such a leg up on reaching their community. And we usually just build them. You can see a lot of them are just shells, and that's normally how they are when we, when we leave it with them and tell them, look, we, we got your roof over your head, a place to worship, and, yeah. and now it's up to you to improve it over the course of time. Yeah. And so you'll see a variety of buildings. That's our headquarters church there. Uh, it's our lar- largest congregation, runs about 250. Uh, but a lot of them are just like this one that are uh, made out of light materials. Um, this one now has a concrete floor, but some of them even have dirt floors. You know, So uh, quite a variety. But what you'll notice is that most of them are packed out. Praise God. A lot of, a lot of hungry souls in Asia. And by the way, there's a lot of hungry souls right here. Amen. Amen. Just got to go looking for them. Uh, we want to share with you some of the praise uh, stats, some of the... Some of the uh, things we give God's thanks for. When we arrived in the Philippines, the ALJC uh, had 30 licensed ministers and 20 churches. The, this is the, sort of the remnant of, of the work of Carlos Grant, who did a tremendous job, much larger than that. But uh, in the time from his death to the time of our getting there, it split up in a lot of different directions. 
But this is what we had to work with. We thank God we had something to work with and we weren't starting from scratch. Uh, today we give God praise that our licensed ministers now uh, stand at 113 and uh, churches at 73 and rapidly increasing. Amen. God be the glory. Some other highlights. We praise God for more than 5,000 baptized in Jesus' name and more than 3,000 have received the Holy Ghost since 2009. Amen. Praise God. And right now, we are in the midst of the greatest uh, in, incoming of souls, harvest of souls we have ever seen in our time. I mean, it's just, it's just with, with, with turmoil, uh, COVID lockdowns. Now, the lockdown situation there is very, very tight. And, I, and I, uh, we, we do really covet your prayers for the Philippines because it's not like it is here in America um, where most people are kind of are back to work and we're figuring out ways to cope with things. And, uh, you know, the, gov the only you know, government's giving us assistance and they're talking about giving more. Nothing like that. There's still in lockdowns. Right. And some of it is not necessarily logical. Um, but uh, it, their governments are, are, are exercising very strict control over the people, maybe just to prove that they can. I don't. Right. You wonder sometimes about the motives. Right. But um, as a result, uh, you've got people who must remember make five to ten dollars a day. It's not like they had a lot laid back somewhere, right? Right. right? right. They're not living day to day. They're living meal to meal. Yes. Literally, not knowing yes. whether next I mean, when they get down to pray, look, give us this day our daily bread. They mean it. Yes. You yes. and I pray it as rote. They mean it. Yes. They don't know where their meal's coming from unless God provides. Right. Literally, yes. okay. And that's in good times. Right. Okay. Now they've been out of work for six and seven months. Oh, God. So what's happening is literally society's breaking down before our very eyes. Mm -hmm. I just got off the phone with. Two, well, I've been on the phone most of the day. A video chat with one of our. Uh, both, well, all the pastors mentioned it, but this last pastor, he's talked. We had break in. We had a break in at the compound. They, they didn't steal much, um, but uh, you know, there there are armed groups mm. now going house to house. Oh, I mean, it's it's a breakdown of society, and oh, it's God. it's really really uh, it's kind of frightening. So something has to, needs to change and change rapidly yeah. there. And it's not the Philippines only. There's a lot of this is going on in your underdeveloped nations. It's not hitting the press right now because they'd rather talk about politics or whatever. But, but um, it's, uh, it's pretty hairy out there. So please keep us in your prayers, them in your prayers. Uh, so giving uh, progress reports, we thank God that uh, by his grace and with your help, we have completed 62 church building projects since 2009 and we currently have eight buildings additional under construction uh, in 2012 amen give God the glory amen, amen. 2012 uh, the vision began to come to fruition when we commissioned our first missionary to the country of Australia and that work was a bit slow uh, Getting, getting off the ground, but it is now prospering, doing well. Uh, we, are, we rejoice to report to you that last year we uh, that work established the Assemblies of the Lord Jesus Christ Australia as a legal entity. Praise the Lord. And there's about 35 meeting amen, every week there in, in Melbourne. Uh, and then in 2017, another uh, work uh, started in Hong Kong, China, which uh, is a uh, a brand new work there as a result of some of our people going from the from uh, uh, the Philippines to Hong Kong to, to work and then teaching Bible studies, the doors open. Uh, just uh, fast forward to the day, more than 30 souls have been baptized in Hong Kong. Several have received the Holy Ghost. And just about two years ago, we, by, by God's amazing grace, in fact, if you ask me how it happened, I just have to say it's God. We were able to legally establish the Assemblies of the Lord Jesus Christ, Hong Kong, as a religious society. Amen. It's, we've been told, we've been, we, when we tell people that, they're saying like, you know, people in the know, they're like, how'd you do that? Because they're not, they're not approving these things. Well, they did it. God did it. Amen. So we can, op otherwise, before this time, uh, we could not legally meet with a group as large as this without a permit. Right. Yeah, it's very strict there, but uh, we, we're free to 
we are free to uh, to evangelize, to do whatever we, whatever needs to be done to reach souls in that great city. Speaking of Hong Kong, we want to just give you uh, uh, some sights uh, from there. Um, we we love that city. It's a tremendous. Uh, it's a beautiful city. It's 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 you know it's a, it's the financial capital of of Asia. But please keep Hong Kong in your prayers because it is under tremendous pressure now. As Hong Kong, as as the uh, Communist Chinese are little by little exercising more and more control over that once very free city, for 156 years wow. Hong Kong was governed by the British. Up in, but that ended in 1997 with a promise from the Chinese that they would uh, keep their hands off, let Hong Kong continue to operate the way they always had for 50 more years. Well, that's gone by the wayside, and Hong Kongers are now very very concerned that they're losing all their freedoms. And so the situation is very uh, desperate. It's very scary for a lot of them. Um, and um, But w from a spiritual point of view, that is simply plowing the field and making hearts uh, very, very open to receiving the gospel. You know, that's what's going on in America. I hope you understand. This COVID, the turmoil in the streets, the, 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 the uncertainty with the elections and all of that. You know what that's doing? It's plowing people's hearts because you know something? The sun's going down on our dispensation. Oh, yeah. Jesus said that the night's coming mm -hmm. when no man can work. What did he say? He said, work while it is day. Oh, Ladies yeah. and gentlemen, it's it's time to be about the master's business. Now, this COVID has got some people laying up at home saying, oh, I'll just watch on the Internet. Well, I thank God that we can do the Internet thing. But that's not for you, folks, if you're healthy. You know? Amen. We should not forsake the assembling of ourselves together. Amen. Amen. Now, if you're older and infirmed uh, or fearful, we'll stay home. But but the bottom line is, and nobody's going to condemn you for that. We all understand that. But the bottom line is, there's no substitute for being with one another. Right. Amen. For 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 praying with one, for for and with one another, for feeling one another's burdens, for for being the church. We need to be together. And not only that, we need to quit looking for excuses not to evangelize. This COVID, maybe this mask thing, you know, we feel like we can't talk to people. It ain't nothing but the devil trying to keep us from reaching souls. Amen. Wear your mask if you need to wear your mask. But the bottom line is we need to be talking to people about the hour that, that we're living in. This is all, amen, the, the greatest time for the church to shine. And somebody said, praise the Lord. All right. Amen. So we want to wrap up uh, conclude to, today by just talking about ways y'all can continue to be a help. You've been a blessing in so many ways, so this is going to be superfluous for you all, but but uh, just kind of reminding, one of the greatest ways that you can help the work, and Sister Naomi already talked about it, is by supporting Bible College students. Uh, we only hit, run them through for one year, uh, and it's, it, it's, it's an intensive, all day long deal. It's 24-7 training begins with early morning prayers mm -hmm. and push-ups if you're late. It be, you know, <laughs> uh, five hours of classroom instruction, lots of homework and, and study afterwards. Um, I, I, you got to be involved in outreach. you got to teach Bible studies. Uh, we're teaching them how to preach. We're teaching them how to rightly divide the word. Uh, we're teaching them how to witness. And we're taking them out and giving them on the, you know, on the job training. And the transformation, as we said, is, is remarkable. And these folks, we're so proud of them. Uh, they're doing a tremendous job, and some of them are going to reach hundreds of people for Jesus Christ. They win a soul. You're the one that supported them. God's a good record keeper. You're not going to you're not going to miss out on your rewards. So it costs right at one hundred dollars to feed in house. Now, previously we published a lower number than that, but it really was just looking at the food only. But by the time you look at all the living expenses, and I went back and just did the math closer. It's really about $100 a month to cover all of their expenses. But that we don't charge any tuition or, or books. That's all going to just actual cost of, of living, uh, you know, just supporting them. And I've had people actually come up to me after church and say, 100 bucks a month, Brother Nanny, that's all? I say, yeah. And I'm thinking, man, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get one here. And then, and, but their wheels are spinning like, well, I got two kids, 100 bucks a month. Can I send them over there? <laughs> Give you two hundred a month. <laughs> That's not exactly where we're coming from. Yeah, yeah. Uh, another thing that uh, is a big blessing is is the uh, building of churches. We build. 
good solid concrete and, and steel buildings for between six and ten thousand dollars. We actually have three, uh, actually just received a pledge recently for one of those. So two pending projects um, uh, that uh, are they're ready to go as soon as we get funds available. We also build uh, starter churches, usually in remote areas, made out of lat materials. They'll seat like twenty or thirty people, mostly out of bamboo, wood. We'll put a steel roof up and uh, uh, usually put in a concrete floor. We can do all that for 2000 These will not hold up for long term because of termites and, and uh, high winds. We'll eventually get them, but they're a big blessing for a few years. We have several projects that uh, are in various stages of, uh, of, of building that, that are, some of these are included in the, uh, the, the earlier number, but uh, we have some other Joined with that some other needs uh, that range between five hundred and three thousand dollars each. Uh, so any help along those lines, even if it's not those big numbers, it's, it's a big big help. Um, supporting world missions with your monthly giving—that's that's a great way to help. Yeah. Um, this is really what what uh, drives most of our, our of the ALJC missions efforts, and you don't have to give large amounts. Just give what the Lord puts on your heart. Right. If everybody does that. Um, the work can go on and prosper. The more that comes in, the more that can go to meet the needs. Number four, you, you saw all the, all the you, you get the first three. You might not have seen this one coming, um, but one of the biggest helps you can be is is just answer the call of God in your own life. Yes. Now, I am going to make a, a short appeal for missionaries because you never know where the next one might come. Uh -huh. But it'll be with a caveat: don't get too excited about becoming a foreign missionary if you are not already a missionary where you're at. If you haven't learned how to be a missionary in, in Beaumont, Texas, you got no business thinking about being a missionary in, in Hong Kong or something, okay? You know, your training's here, okay? All right, so we're all clear on that? You know, uh, be a soul winner here. You're not going to start being a soul winner, you know, when you get, get halfway around the world, right? Okay. All right, but with that caveat, I'd I, I like to just illustrate that there is a tremendous need for missionaries in Asia. Let's do a pop quiz on the movie. All right, so how many countries are there in Asia? I said it real fast. How many were there? Anybody catch it? Okay, I'll, I'll give you a pass on that one. I'll, I'll give you the answer in a minute. Okay, what percentage of the world's population is Asia? Six, six what? 60, she got, oh, you get an A today, sister. 60% right. uh, of the world's population is, is, is one continent. There's, what, seven continents in the world? 60% is on one continent. Okay, this is not, this next question, this is not, this, this isn't in your material, so if you don't get this one, it's okay. But this is extra credit. What percent of the world's population do you think the United States represents? Care to guess? That's that's a good guess, but it's wrong. Okay, but thank you for guessing because uh, that 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 shows some boldness. Fifteen. We we need to go the other direction. Less uh, less than eight. Less than five. More than one. More than two. Three percent. You get the right answer. The United States is between three and four percent. Three versus what was Asia? Sixty. Okay. Now. There are, praise God, here in America, thousands of one God, Jesus' name baptizing, Holy Ghost yeah, preaching, yeah. amen, spirit-filled churches. Yeah. Some, can somebody shout praise the, Lord? praise the Lord? Amen. And there are thousands of, of great ministers here in America. How many... Missionaries, do you suppose, are, are in Asia? Hmm. I went looking for them. I, I, I researched the, the UPC, the ALJC, mm -hmm. and all oneness groups. Pastor Simmons, Brother Gray told me the other day that there are 75 ministers in the Texas district of the Assemblies of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's marvelous because... Mm -hmm. Like seven or eight years ago, there's like 25. So um, somebody shout praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, that's great. That's the Texas District of the Assemblies of the Lord Jesus Christ. UPC blows that away, I'm sure. But, but thank God, 75. That's great. 
you know something? You won't find 75 missionaries in all of Asia. Mm. So there's something out of whack here. Mm -hmm. The vast majority of the apostolic churches and ministries are where 3% of the population is. Mm. All my life I've heard it preached that Jesus can come at any moment because the gospel has already been preached in all the world already, in every nation. You heard that? Mm -hmm. Who came up with that? Because I'd like him to come to, come to Asia. <laughs> I think Satan came up with that. And I think we bought it way too easy. Because the bottom line, the only way the gospel is supposedly being preached in all the world right now is over the TV by folks like TBN who are preaching a, a watered-down version of the gospel that's not good enough to save anybody in a language very few people understand. And most people can't get it because their government blocks the broadcast. And so what do you really see in our part of the world where all the people are at? You already saw it. You see people bowing down. Oh, God. Intelligent looking people, not dummies. Yeah. Bowing, offering prayers, sincere heartfelt prayers to, to pieces of wood and stone. Gods they think. They've been taught these gods will hear their prayer. Oh, oh, oh how it tears my heart out. But this is what you see all over Asia. I have a worshiper of all the worshipers. But you and I yeah. are so blessed yeah. to know yeah. the one true living God who hears and who answers prayer. Amen. 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 What's his name tonight? Jesus. Could you just love him tonight? Thank you, Jesus. Yes, we're so blessed, Lord, to know the truth. We're so blessed, oh God. Thank you for letting me be born in America. Thank you for letting us be where in the 3%. God, where there's so many one God believers. Thank you, Lord, for letting us be here. But, oh, God, don't let us be so comfortable, God, while the rest of the world remains in darkness, oh, God. Amen. Stir up labors, Lord. Stir up labors for the harvest. Stir up labors, God. Amen. Because the rest of the world needs to hear the gospel. Amen. Stir us up, oh God. Amen. I know you feel like I do. Amen. So I'm only going to ask the question rhetorically. But don't you feel that they also deserve to know the truth? Of course you do. Amen. This is why we need missionaries. We need to quit, quit preaching this fooey that the gospel has been preached. No, don't misunderstand me. You need to live. Like Jesus could come any day. That's right. Amen. You live any other way, you're 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 you're, you're foolish. That's right. Because whether he's coming in the clouds of glory tonight or not, I don't know. But he might come for you or me before the night's over. Right. Right. All right. So you need to live like he's going to come. Right. Amen. Don't live foolish. But we have still a lot of work to do, and the sun is setting. And Jesus's only prayer request was that he, we would pray to the Father. To send forth labors into his harvest. The only thing he ever asks us to pray for. And I wonder how often do we pray for our prayer requests. But the one, the only one thing Jesus ever asked for was us to pray for labors to be sent in the harvest. God help us to never neglect his prayer requests. Let's include it in every prayer request that he made from now on. God sent forth labors because the harvest is white. Amen. Say not there's four months and come the harvest. Lift up your eyes. The harvest is white. It's ready right now. What's lacking? Labors. But again, don't, don't get all stirred up to go to the foreign field. Amen. When you've got a mission field right here. Amen. Amen. Your school, your place of work, your neighborhood. People get all excited about going to the end of the world, Pastor Simmons, but they won't go to the end of their street. Come on. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, you got you got a mission field next door, all right? Amen. Praise God. But we do desperately need missionaries over overseas. We have, we have entire nations. Japan is. I could take you to Japan. We we have an opening in Japan. We have an opening in Hong Kong. I mean, we we're doing our best to cover the work. By sending Filipino ministers in and out, Sister Nami go and, and I go every five or six weeks. When the country's open, it's all closed to us now. Pray that these nations open back up yeah, due to COVID. Right. We can't get back in the Philippines due to right. COVID. Right. But even when we were there, it was difficult for us to, 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 to cover 
even every weekend, mm -hmm. even every other weekend is about the best we could do by sending somebody there. So we need full-time missionaries. Myanmar need Paul. Already have ongoing works. They just need missionaries to go there and build the work up. Amen. All right, so there's a lot of things you can do. Pray for your missionaries. We thank God for your prayers. We feel them uh, and appreciate them more than you know. Amen. In closing tonight, I want to just uh, give you an update on the for those of you who haven't seen it, this is the church y'all y'all built. This is on the on the island of Negros, the northern part of the island, in a place called Bulanone Crossing. Uh, that's the pastor right there. That's Joseph Edenai. He pastors two churches, and uh, I don't know how. And he also preaches on the radio every day. Uh, he's he's a go getter. Notice what that sign says right there. Okay, <laughs> that's. <laughs> Amen. So they are so appreciative. Amen. Amen. So appreciative. Amen. And they, they're actually packed out. I mean, they are packed out. That, that building occupies it, pretty much every square foot of property they have there. Uh, they're totally, even though uh, right now, uh, I don't know if we're being broadcast, but I don't want to get anybody in trouble, but uh, some of our churches in the Philippines are, are having services uh, kind of in def a little bit beyond what they're supposed to be in terms of social distancing. They got nowhere to go but up. And so yeah. uh, right now their their plan is to build an addition uh, so they can move all their Sunday school operations upstairs. So that's okay. that's what they're want. You know, that, that's their prayer. And uh, that addition right there probably will run between three and four thousand dollars, something like that. Mm -hmm. So that's. That's what their prayer request is right there. So just wanted you to see that. Um, we thank you today once again for the tremendous opportunity to share our burden and passion with you all. And uh, we don't want to conclude tonight without offering prayer. If there's an uh, opportunity, if God's touching your heart, maybe he's convicted you about getting more involved in soul winning. Mm -hmm. I think we ought to take a, a minute or two yeah. to... Uh, to let God talk to our hearts about, about his work. Won't you do that? Why don't we pray for labors to be sent forth into the harvest before we conclude. Father, we thank you, God, for the opportunity, God, to share the gospel. Don't let us miss this opportunity. God, while the day is still, the sun is still shining, oh God, amen. Help us, God, to get busy about your work, amen, while it's still day, amen. We worship you, Lord. God, I pray that your spirit would minister to everyone that's here today. God, touch the sick. God, God, encourage those who are who are downcast today. Amen. But God, motivate each and every one of us to do what we can for souls. Amen. Here you go, Pastor.
so many times it's easy to look at missions work as well that's over there and it's easy to get so caught up in what we've got going on that we forget about the plight of the rest of the world yeah I, I knew the Asian countries were highly populated but I never I never realized that is densely populated densely populated sure don't have enough workers in the harvest. They don't. It's easy to get caught up in our little world and us four and no more and forget about the fact that there are hungry, hurting hearts all across this globe. Amen. Amen. Uh, Brother, Sister, and Amy, thank you all for having the burden for reaching the lost. Amen. You know, we, we think we got it, uh, we think we're busy, and, and we are, we are, but we think we're busy with coming to church two or three times a week and going about our lives, making a living, and these guys have church basically every day, right? Bible college is basically church, it's just a little structured a little differently. So, and then on the weekends, while we're relaxing, they're having to travel to the other churches. To that's, that's a harrowing schedule. It is. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother and sister, and Amy, for being here, for helping us to see it. And, as I began to watch the slide and listen to you talk, I remembered some of the things that you talked about the first time you came. But shame on me because I'd forgotten most of it. So, in your prayer times. <laughs> hopefully not quite that long. In your prayer times, let's be sure and lift them up in prayer. Amen. Not everybody can be a missionary. And I get, I, I, I would not survive on the mission field. <laughs> I'd like to think I'm a pretty tough old boy, but uh, no, I wouldn't survive out there. Amen. Uh, everybody can't go, but everybody can do something to support. And I'm grateful that this church, ever since we've been a part of the ALJC, we have supported missions. And we are going to continue that. And everywhere that we can do better, we're going to. Amen. Amen. Uh, God bless you tonight. Thank you for being here. And let's keep the Namie family lifted up in prayer and their work. Uh, we are going to be contributing to the cause. And if any of you want to give a little extra, please feel free to do so. Is as much needed and much appreciated. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for being here. Amen. Amen.